Hello, my name is Marcello. Welcome to the Source AV Design Group's YouTube channel. Today I'm excited to discuss some fabulous monoacoustic speakers. This video will cover the design, build quality, and sound impressions of the larger Platymon Virtual Coaxial One speaker, as seen in the video, with a silver finish, and the smaller Near Field Supermon Mini speakers, as seen with a pink finish. I paired up the more prominent Platymon VC1 speakers with a few amplifiers and DACs I have in-house, including my Solid State Reference Mishi X3 integrated, my Audio Research i50 integrated tube amplifier, and the Macintosh MA252 hybrid integrated amplifier fed by my Cord Hugo 2 as the DAC. I paired up the smaller Supermon Minis with the Audio Research i50 with internal AKM DAC and my Cord Annie desktop amplifier fed by my Hugo 2 as the DAC for my near-field impressions in my office. Let's first talk a little bit about who Monacoustic is. Monacoustic, or MON, which stands for More Natural Premium Sound, is a South Korean hi-fi speaker manufacturer. June, the founder and chief engineer, is a mathematics and topology major who became obsessed with audio at a young age. Growing up in the 70s in Korea, he was exposed to tube amplification sound from a young age, and his curiosity in audio began. June also learned to play several instruments along his audio journey, learning the timbre and tone that different instruments produce. Based on his love for audio and his life experiences with music, June began designing his speakers over a 15-year period. In 2020, June decided to share his longtime passion for audio and speakers and officially formed Monacoustic Corporation and debuted his line of speakers for the world at Expona in 2022. Monacoustic was started with a simple goal, to create impeccable audio products that deliver unparalleled performance that will stand the test of time. As a newer speaker line in North America, I have enjoyed talking with Young from Monacoustic about these two speakers and spending several weeks listening to them. So let's discuss some of the tech specs, design, and my sound impressions of the two speakers. Starting with the Platymon VC1 speaker, Monacoustic's latest speaker offering. The outer construction of the speakers is reinforced with the highest quality 6601 grade aluminum with excellent finishing quality obtained through a process called hyper brushing. These speakers look spectacular with their included matching stands, and I suspect they would likely have approval from many audio enthusiasts significant others for their classy and industrial styling. They are currently available in black and silver as seen in this video. Some custom colors are also available on special request for an additional fee. The speakers are a two-way virtual coaxial design with a monoacoustic AMT tweeter, which is made in the USA and is capable of producing frequencies from 3,100 Hz up to 28,000 Hz. If you are unfamiliar with AMT tweeters, they are pretty magical sounding when tuned appropriately and are loved by many audio enthusiasts. I found the AMT tweeter to sound quite extraordinary with zero listening fatigue while presenting superb detail and imaging. I was also able to utilize my Mishi X3 integrated amplifier's tone control to layer on additional treble if I wanted to, which added a bit more air and sparkle to the top end of the speakers, or pair the speakers with the even more detail-rich, airy treble presentation of the Audio Research i50 integrated tube amplifier for even more lifelike sound staging, imaging, and detail presentation. The speakers are transparent enough to be able to hear the differences your amplifier or DAC brings to the equation when listening, and you can tailor their sound to your liking with the use of tube amplification, EQ, or tone control, which I tried with the Macintosh MA252 integrated hybrid amplifier with great success. The two driver units per speaker in the Platymon VC1, which handle the 53Hz to 3100Hz region, are customized 5-inch harmonic drivers made in Germany. The 4-ohm speakers have a sensitivity of 91 dB and a total frequency range of 53 Hz to 28,000 Hz. The dual-ported design of the speakers produces impressive bass for a bookshelf speaker in my listening room, especially when compared to a similarly specced FR of another bookshelf speaker we reviewed on our channel recently, the ATC SEM19, which is a sealed box design that was not capable of rendering full-sounding music for all genres of music without subwoofers in my listening room. Listening to the Platymon VC1 was a night and day difference between the speakers, and the monoacoustic speakers are easily hitting 53 Hz and at times dipping slightly lower. This dual port design in my heavily sound treated room, besides aiding the speaker's punchy bass signature, also helps to create excellent sound stage depth. Depending on your room, these bookshelf speakers will not necessarily need subwoofers to enjoy their sound. However, for deeper sub bass, for some genres of music like electronic, you still may want a sub or two depending on your preferences and your room acoustics. The speaker's dimensions are 10.6 inches long by 7.5 inches wide and 17 inches high, with each speaker weighing 32 pounds. As I mentioned, the speakers include beautiful heavy-duty stands that match the speaker's finish and have three solid tungsten ball bearings each speaker sits on for resonant decoupling. 
Since the speakers sit on ball bearings, the speakers can move if bumped into or touched. So keep this in mind if your listening room is frequented by young children, furry friends, or a family member that drinks too much red wine. The height of the stands are around 21 inches high, with an additional 1.5 inches with a spiked feet or 1.8 inches with a spiked feet and plate for hardwood floors. In my room, this puts the AMT tweeter a bit lower than my ears are positioned, which according to Mon Acoustic was done deliberately to achieve the sound signature and design they wanted. Usually I listen to much taller floor standing speakers that position the tweeter at ear level as my standard reference, so I had to get used to the slightly different presentation of vocal height and some instruments. Still, after my ears burned into the sound signature of the Platymon VC1 speaker, it wasn't a big deal. The speakers look and feel as if they were built to last and can be passed down from one generation to the next, as there will be no issues with a traditional wood speaker or laminate finish that will surely deteriorate over time, so the longevity of the speakers from this perspective should be more significant. The Platymon VC1 and Supermon Mini use high quality Sanctus cabling for the internal wiring. I didn't find the speakers challenging to drive with any of the in-house amplifiers for my room and my seating position of about 9 feet away, including the least powerful i50 integrated amplifier which on paper is 50 watts per channel. Mon Acoustic recommends at least 30 watts per channel for the Platymon VC1 speakers, but preferably 50 watts and up for better performance. The speakers in my room have a warmer character to their sound, especially when paired with a Mishi X3 or Macintosh MA252, which I thoroughly enjoy, and these are not neutral sounding speakers, but rich and fluid with how they produce music and instrument timbre. Suppose you are a lover of very energetic travel or brighter speakers, in that case you will want to take care with amplifier and DAC pairings to bring more of that to your system, or consider different speakers as these are not bright or treble forward speakers. However, I found the speakers have ample treble for my preferences and paired well with all the amps I have in the house. For more treble energy, air, and sparkle, the ARC i50 brought the most to the equation of my amps in house. Depending on my mood or the type of music I was listening to, I enjoyed bouncing between the i50, MA252, or my Mishi X3, which all have a bit different sonic character which complement the speakers in their unique ways. If I were going to choose one favorite amplifier pairing in-house for the Platymon VC1 speakers, it would be a tough choice between the Solid State Mishi X3 integrated or the Macintosh MA252 hybrid integrated. I didn't feel the mid-range was overly forward sounding, but it also has a bit of richness and warmth for vocals and instruments falling in this range, which was very forgiving to listen to even with some bad recordings. For listeners that prefer a bit more upper mid-range energy, you may want to consider a synergistic amplifier or the use of tone control or EQ to emphasize this region, however, I didn't find it necessary for my room. The soundstage travels outside of the speakers in my room with excellent imaging and for a bookshelf speaker, I was impressed with the soundstage width and depth. The speakers at the time of filming this video sell for $6,500 a pair, including the stands. Now let's discuss the smaller but impressive Supermon mini speakers designed for near field listening. The build quality of these speakers was equally as exceptional compared to the larger Mon Acoustic speakers. With a single port design, I was impressed with how much bass and bass impact I could hear in my office. Compared to my larger Kef LS50 Metas, which I usually use for near-field speakers, the more compact design was a breath of fresh air in my office, saving so much space and giving my desktop area a much cleaner open feel. The outer enclosure of the speaker is reinforced with high-quality materials, including 6601 grade aluminum, which is durable and naturally has anti-corrosion properties. I prefer the sound of towing in the speakers towards my ears when using them for near-field listening, creating an equal lateral triangle for my listening position. The FR of the Supermon Mini is 65Hz to 25kHz, so if you want more bass for gaming or movie watching in a near field environment, you may want to add a subwoofer. For my room and the proximity of the speakers to the back wall, I was pleased with the bass signature of the speakers, which according to Mon are tuned to have more bass for the North America market than the speakers do when sold in Korea. Again, the speakers are transparent and will allow you to hear how different amplification influences the sound of the speakers, which have an overall richer sound and are not neutral sounding speakers leaning warmer with a more laid back upper mid-range and treble when paired with a Chord Anti desktop amplifier, which was enjoyable and unfatiguing to listen to with all types of music. An in-house designed AMT tweeter produces higher frequencies from 6800 Hz to 25000 Hz. In a near-field configuration, you can hear even more details in the music, reminding me a little of the headphone from Head Audio, but without having their heavy weight on your head when listening while still enjoying the benefits of AMT technology. 
The Mark Fenelon designed 4 inch harmonic driver consists of a specially coated paper cone and handles from 65 Hz to 6800 Hz and contains inside an isobaric network with a Mark Fenelon design 4 inch woofer. I was continually impressed with the sound output from such a small speaker. The speaker sensitivity is 88 dB and I was more than able to drive the speakers to loud listening levels with my 10 watt cord anti-desktop amplifier. The 50 watt per channel Audio Research i50 integrated tube amplifier helped the speakers to sound tighter and more dynamic, presenting more soundstage accuracy, depth, dimensionality, air, and sharper imaging, even if I couldn't turn up the volume as much on the amplifier due to my close seating position. The 4 ohm 2.5 way isobaric speakers weigh about 11.5 pounds each and are 4.72 inches wide by 8.27 inches tall and 6.69 inches deep, presenting a minimal footprint with very big sound for near field listening. Standard colors for the speakers are silver and pink with custom colors available on request for an additional fee. At the time of filming this video, the Supermon mini speakers sell for $2,000 a pair. If you're a near-field listener or looking for a speaker with big sound in a small package and have limited space, the 2.5-way isobaric ported design of the Supermon Mini should be given consideration. In conclusion, I enjoyed these monoacoustic speakers' colorful, natural, rich sound. As a listener that enjoys headphones and speakers that lean warm or neutral warm, these speakers are tuned toward a listener like me. When listening to classical, jazz, or orchestral compositions, the more detailed, airy sound of the Audio Research i50 was a pleasure to pair with both speakers, adding a bit more air and sparkle to the top end that I appreciate with those genres of music. I enjoyed pairing up the Macintosh MA252 and Mishi X3 for rock, pop, metal, and EDM with the Platymon VC1 speakers. Thanks to June and Young of Monacoustic for sending out these speakers for us to check out. If you would like us to carry the Monacoustic speaker line at TSAV, please comment and let us know. If you're interested in trading up your old headphones, amplifiers, or other generally used audio gear for a new set of speakers or a new amplifier, check out the links in the video description to our trade up program. And don't forget, we will price match other authorized dealers. We have some cool videos coming this year with new product announcements, so please consider subscribing to our channel today. From $150 earphones to multi million dollar home audio, cinema, and automation systems, TSAV is a hi fi enthusiast paradise for building the system of your dreams. So let's start the conversations in the video comments on what you think of monoacoustic speakers. Did you get to hear them at our live listening event in our showroom recently? If you did, what do you think? While you're there, smash that like button for us. Until next time, friends, remember, let the music be your guide.